Every year, 30 million pounds of plastic is used in America. Furthermore, only 7% of it is recycled, leaving our once pristine environment an unpleasant wasteland. In addition, the average American uses 185 pounds of plastic every year. Plastic isn't the only thing going into landfills, however. Food waste is an, also a major problem, with 40% of food being scraped off plates and dumped into the trash. 3,000 pounds a second, to be exact. This waste festers in landfills, taking up valuable space and creating methane, which destroys our already paper-thin ozone layer, leaving us more and more susceptible to the dangers of solar radiation. As we researched, we found out about bioplastics that were environmentally friendly because they degraded quickly unlike conventional plastics and were also made with plant-based starches instead of petroleum. Bioplastics today are sourced from corn and potatoes, which happen to be major food sources. Also, corn is also being used for e ethanol. After extensive research using multiple sources, we discovered that avocado pits are 30% made up of starch. We decided to use avocados because our state, California, is one of the largest producers of it in the USA and also one of the largest consumers. Our solution consists of three parts. Processing the avocado pits to extract the starch, processing of the starch to convert it into plastic, and a strategy to collect the avocado pits from restaurants in San Diego County. To extract the starch from the pits, we begin with the dirty pits collected. You wash these pits using um, soap and water. Then you peel the outer skins of the pits. Then you chop up the pits in halves or in fourths if you wish. Next, place the pits in the blender with water. Blend the pits where th and that is where the starch will come from. You pour the solution that you just made from the blender onto a container with a cheesecloth on top. Everything in the container is where the starch will physically form. The mass collected on the cheesecloth is the pulp from the pits. In the container, the starch will sediment at the very bottom of the container. Note that it is a lighter color or a lighter orange than the rest of the solution. Then, drain the liquid from the container, leaving behind the lighter orange starch. Once the starch has dried, gather the starch powder which forms from it and spread it out onto the desired surface. Now, you have your starch powder. To make the bioplastic in the second part, the plasterizer, water, and starch will be mixed at high heat to form gel. Then we will heat and extrude the plastic. Finally, we will let the plastic cool. With this bioplastic, you can make many different things such as Lego minifigures. We can also make things like plastic film which can be used to wrap packing chips and even extruded filaments for use in 3D printers. We needed to know if we wanted a box shaped bin or a cylinder shaped bin. We decided to do both, a rectangular prism with rounded corners. We know it had to hold at least 20 gallons of anything, otherwise the normal restaurant would fill the bin over the top. We decided to go 30 gallons, so then even the busiest restaurant can't fill the bin over the top. We also will add a biodegradable lining so we don't have to clean the bin every week with water. When we made a model, we used popsicle sticks to make it a cylinder with a lid that has a sliding door to put pits in without releasing all the gases. We had to do experiments to find out what conditions make the avocado pits yield the most starch. We had four samples of ten pits each, refrigerated sealed, refrigerated unsealed, open sealed, and open unsealed. We found that the refrigerated and sealed would smell the most and the one in the open and not sealed yielded the most starch. We used a temperature and humidity sensor connected to an Arduino Uno, and we also had an LCD 
display connected to it so that you don't have to have the Arduino constantly plugged into a computer with the Arduino software. It was constantly being updated uh, by the temperature and humidity sensor, but the backlight was only on when you pressed a button. The Arduino was used for the samples of pits outside, while the refrigerated samples used a humidity gauge and the refrigerator built-in se temperature sensor. We made a model for the truck so that it can actually do its job. We made it so it could pick up the bin, then dump the bin's contents into the truck's reservoir for pits, then finally put the bin down on the floor. It was designed to pick up the pits and get the next load of pits from the next restaurant on the route. It took about 40 seconds for the truck to pick up one bin. The way, the way the mechanical grabber works is the grabber is held away from the pivot point, and then the pivot point is on the end of an extendable beam. The beam extends and then the grabber grabs the bin, and then the pivot point tilts the bin up a little bit and then the beam retracts. Next the pivot point flips the bin over, dumping the pits. First we identified all the Mexican restaurants in San Diego County using Yelp. Then we printed them out on a map so it would be easier to group them into clusters. Then we assigned several clusters to each team member. Each team member found the optimized route for each cluster with the help of a computer program. Of course, we need a factory. The factory will consist of a washing machine to remove the outer skin of the seeds, a rasping or pulping machine to crush and remove the starch from the pulp, a screening or filtering machine to separate the starch from the pulp, a drying machine to remove the free water from the starch sediment, a bolting machine to pulverize the starch, and finally a thermoplastic extrusion machine which mixes the ingredients to make the bioplastic. Save those pits!